The first question that most people ask when being introduced to the linked list data structure is, why not just use its cousin, the array? The answer is pretty simple, efficiency. An array is constructed in a contiguous block of memory, and it's very simple to add elements into the array by directly addressing each subscript. This operation on its own has a big O growth rate of O1, or a constant growth rate. It's pretty rare, though, that you only add a single element, so the operation really is better measured in terms of a linear growth rate, or uh, ON. Now, if you're just adding elements to the array and never moving them around during the operation of the program, uh, this data structure is probably a pretty good choice. On the other hand, if any of your operations require the insertion or deletion of one or more elements in that array, the efficiency of that operation takes a steep slide. In order to add a new element somewhere in the middle of an array, it requires that you first move every element past that subscript down one position. This requires a looping operation, and depending on the number of elements, it can take significant time to complete. Only when this operation is finished can you then insert the new data item. The same thing is true when you delete an element. Because most of the operations on an array assume that all the subscript positions are filled, you can't leave an empty subscript in the middle of your array. So just like inserting an item, when an element is deleted, all of the subsequent data elements need to be moved up one position to maintain the continuity of the data. The linked list is a much more dynamic data structure than the array. Rather than allocating a large contiguous block of memory that can contain either a fixed or an unknown number of data elements, the linked list allocates memory sufficient for one data element at a time. So for example, our linked list is going to contain ducks. So the space necessary to contain one duck is allocated and the duck is placed in that memory location. There is one other component to a linked list node, and that's a pointer or a, a reference in Java. And that pointer points to another memory location. For the first duck in the list, the pointer is going to be set to null, which indicates that there are no other connected elements. The first guy in the list becomes the head duck. When a second duck is added to the list, the process is repeated. Space for one duck and his pointer is allocated, and the duck is placed in that location. Now here's where the magic happens. The pointer in the first duck's node is set to the memory address of the second duck. The second duck has his pointer set to null because he's now at the end of the list. One duck, two duck, and now you have a linked list. Any operation can now follow this chain of references to jump from memory location to memory location to memory location and perform whatever operation it needs to perform. Now watch this. If we want to insert another duck into the list, we don't have to move anything in memory. A new memory location is allocated and the pointer of the preceding duck is set to point to the new memory location and the reference of the new duck node is set to point to the subsequent duck in the list. Now you can see that the linked list in terms of efficiency has a constant or O1 growth rate because each operation stands on its own. To demonstrate this once again, you'll remember that a delete operation in the array required the removal of the data element, and then the subsequent move meant all of the other data elements had to be moved up one slot. In a linked list, a node can be removed and deallocated, and nothing has to move in memory. The pointer in a duck A now needs to just point to the memory location of duck C as we take that middle duck out. In Java, it's even better because you don't have to deallocate the memory. The garbage collection system will take care of releasing that unused reference.
There are a couple of ways that we can code the linked list, and neither one of them are terribly complicated as long as you understand the data structure that you're working with. And the first thing we need to understand is the node. That is the element that is going to be placed into memory and then connected one to the next, to the next, to the next. In this little example that we have, uh, we call this class list node. And the two important parts of it are the payload and the reference or the pointer. Now the payload can be anything that you want. In this case, I'm just using the primitive integer, uh, but this could be another class altogether. Let's say you have a class that describes um, a student or an employee or a patient or something of that nature. Instead of a private integer here, you could uh, create an instance of that class. And so the payload would contain all the elements of that class. For this demonstration program, we're just using integers here. All right, so this is the payload, which will be known as value. And then the pointer, or the reference, which we're going to name next, it's important to note that this is of type list node. So this is a self-referencing uh, bit of code here. That means that the only reference that this can point to is another list node. Uh, the constructor and the setters and getters, um, you understand how all of those things work. So this is your node, and this is what we're going to be working with to construct the list. The first thing that we do in the code, or as far as uh, executing the code, is we create an instance of list node called head. Now this is going to contain a reference. Uh, this reference is going to point to the very first element in our singly linked list. That is, there is only one reference in each node, and it points to the subsequent node in the list. So the first thing we want to do is add a node or many nodes into the list. We take and create a couple of variables, a couple of pointer variables, current node, previous node. This keeps track of what you just passed and what's, what's coming up, what's going to be the, the next node. So we create or instantiate a temporary node that's going to contain the data. And because this is a singly linked list, we only need to be concerned with the head pointer and the pointers that point forward. If you somehow manage to lose the head pointer in your program or reset it to null or do something like that, uh, be warned, you have lost your list. So it's very important that you handle the head pointer or the head reference uh, very carefully. All right, if head equals null means that the list is empty. And so we come in here and we simply say head equals temp node. This passes the reference or the memory location of temp node and places it in head. So therefore we know where the beginning of the list uh, starts. So temp node is in memory and head contains its address. So this would process once, do that, exit, and go back. So in this case, uh, I've created a little uh, loop structure. It's going to read through all the elements here. So the first element in our linked list is 44. Now, when we come down into here, the head, head does not equal null anymore. Head has the reference to the 44 element. So it comes in here, sets current node to head, and begins a loop. Now, because this is a singly linked loop, uh, in this case, I am opting to add each of the nodes at the end of the list. You can do it the opposite way. You can put every new node at the head and simply connect that up and then get rid of this loop structure, whichever way you want to approach it. So we read through the list until current node uh, equals null. That is, I'm going to walk all the way through the list until I reach the end pointer, which is going to be set to null. Okay, so we come back here and current hood, we, we go forward. In this case, it's only going to go one time. So it steps into the current node, it gets that address, 
Previous node equals the current node, so that's the one before me. Current node equals the next value of current node, which in this case equals null. So this equals null. Uh, then this is where the uh, uh, link is created here. I've stepped through the end of the list. My temp node, the address of my temp node, is going to be set into my previous node. So 44 is going to be connected to 33. And then lather, rinse, repeat. This goes and goes and goes until all the elements are placed in the list. So when I execute this program, I call traverse list the first time on an empty list. It should report back that the list is empty. I'll run this, add all these elements. I'll call traverse list a second time. And this should result in showing me a full list or all the elements in the list. So let's execute this. So it runs and we see that empty list and then the full list after that. So when it traverses the list, it uses the magic of these links. We come in here to traverse list. I get the head value current node. If current node equals null, that's where we get the empty list. Otherwise, it's simply going to loop, loop following the nodes or following the addresses of the nodes. As long as it doesn't hit null, null being the last element of the list. And I read the value of the current node, output it, current node then equals current node next. So it prints 44, then it gets the address for the next node, which is 33, comes back up here, checks to see if it's null, it is not, comes down here, prints it out, then gets the address from 33, which points to one, around and around and around. When it gets to the number two over here, and it comes down here and it sets this get next, that last element in the list has a null pointer or null reference in it. And so that gets set to null. It loops back up here. That's null and you're out. In talking about the inefficiency of the array was that when we deleted an element out of the list, it resulted in having to move a ton of stuff in memory. In the case of the linked list, it doesn't have to move anything. We are simply going to deallocate the reference so that it is no longer in use and allow the Java garbage collection to clean it up and reconnect uh, the pointer from uh, the element on one side to the element on the other side. So coming back in here, I set my variables here and I go through the process of looking for my element. So it loops through the, the list looking for the element. When it finally finds the element here, um, I get, I set previous node to the current node next. So watch what happens here. When I land on 64, I have previous node points to 98. So 98, the pointer there gets set to whatever 64 points to, which is 31. So 98 ends up pointing to 31. That means that this reference is no longer in use and the garbage collection will go in and pick it up. The big difference there again in the array is I don't have to move anything. All I have to do is connect one pointer to the other pointer. So this is how you roll your own, and, and the advantage again is flexibility. If I want to create a doubly linked list, if I want to traverse the list from front to back, if I, or from back to front, however I want to do it, uh, this offers me the most flexibility. Like a lot of things, Java simplifies the inclusion of a linked list in your program by providing you with a linked list collection class.
The collection classes are a group of container objects that enable you to group like items together and then uh, move and traverse amongst those items. You're probably most familiar with the array list if you've worked with arrays at all. And the linked list is almost as simple to work with. In this example, rather than a simple integer, I'm going to work with three different items, and that is in the album.java class. You'll see that we are going to use uh, three object data types, uh, the artist, the name of the band, the name of the album, and the format in which that album exists in the collection. So what I'm going to model with this is a small part of a CD collection or a music collection is a better example here. So I'm going to define the, the data class or the storage class that I'm going to utilize here. Uh, same thing again, I've got a constructor here. Now let's jump over here. The first thing that you'll need to do is define your linked list. Now I'm doing two of them. The first one is album list. This is going to be an unordered list. I'm going to just add the elements. And the second one is an ordered list in which I'm going to put the albums in order uh, by band name. Again, both of these data types, you pass the, the class or the data object type that you're going to use here between the brackets. And that creates a linked list of albums. Now you notice something that was missing in the album definition, and that is there's no next pointer. One of the nice things about the collection classes is it handles all of the connectivity. It handles all of the linking of the objects together for you. You never need to get involved in that. And so when we look at this code here, you're going to see that it's much, much simpler. So let's look at first processing the file. I'm going to read this collection of the band, the album, and the format. I'm going to process one by one and add them into the list. You've read files before, so you understand what all this stuff is doing. The thing that we're most interested in here is right here. I'm going to read the text line. I'm going to separate it based upon a comma separated value file. So I'm going to split it at the comma. And then I'm going to instantiate a new album uh, using that constructor and passing those parts to it. Now this is the complicated part. Watch this. In order to add this into my linked list, I call the, the linked list add method and pass it that object, that album object. Now you notice what's different here than in the previous roll your own example is I didn't need to check and see if the list was empty. I don't need to have two different, two different methods of adding data into the file. The linked list class handles that for me. When I want to read the data or process it in some way, I'm going to call uh, my method traverse list and uh, use a special form of the for call. So for every album, and I'm going to call that variable a, for every album that is in my list. Um, I use a, a variable or a parameter here so that I can pass in either the ordered list or the unordered list and process it. So let's execute this. You see that when it runs, it lists and added all of my albums into the list. Now an alternative that is only marginally more complicated is to add the data elements in uh, some kind of order. The linked list class doesn't do that for you. All it does is add them in the list where you tell it to put it. So uh, again, I open the file. I'm going to process the file. Now you see that I've done something a little bit different in this case. I did add the isEmpty method here so that I don't try to spin through an empty loop. So if it's empty, I'm simply going to add the very first album. This will only be called with the first element that I'm adding to the list. Every subsequent item that is found 
or that is read from the file is going to be processed through this while loop. This while loop will run in increasing sizes. That is, as the list gets longer, it runs a little bit longer. And it reads through and it compares the current string or the, the current band name against the artist that's already in the list. And so it compares those two. And when it finds that it is less than, then that is the spot at which I want to insert it. I use this counter, this uh, count as I spin through the list here to tell me the location at which I want to add that. And so when I have found the correct location, I use that counter right here as my insert location, and I use my album again to add the data into the linked list. Now what this does for me is it pushes the links apart and it recreates the link from the previous to the new to the subsequent nodes in the list. Handles all that for me. It's not something that I have to do. And again, when we execute, you see that the list is now in alphabetical order. The linked list class, just like the array list class, and really in general, all of the collection classes vastly simplifies your operations on collections of data. So the time that you spend studying those classes um, will be well rewarded.